one of the most common mistakes that people make during market competitions is to lower their price below the prices of the competing products. But usually this leads to price wars. In this video, I want to show you how you can avoid price wars without losing your market share. I am Dr. Victor Igwe and I am so delighted to have you with me today. I would so love for you to subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button down here, turn on your notifications so you can get a lot when we post new and valuable content. Now, let's go. The Investopedia.com definition of price wars caught my attention. Guess what? It defined it as when two or more rival companies lower prices of comparable goods and services with the goals of stealing customers from one another, or at least with the goal of enlarging their market share. So basically, price war is when I reduce my price from $100 to $99 in order to pull customers away from a competitor only to have the competitor lower his own price uh, to $98. Now usually, at this point, many brands uh, will just run off and get into some insane rivalry of reducing their own prices to 97 or even 96 dollars just to show the rival that they can play the game so the cycle goes on and on until both firms are seriously wounded of course even if you're a very strong company and you get into price wars regardless of whether you uh, come out as uh, someone who have outdone the other competitors you still will be wounded can you imagine the Russian war on Ukraine where a lot of people thought that Russia would just go in, swallow Ukraine and come out unharmed? But you can see that we, are, we continue to see massive losses on both sides. That is exactly what price wars would do to participants. Of course, only the customers gain during price wars because the sellers unknowingly hand over their powers to buyers. But the worst part is uh, the fact that price wars do not even guarantee increased sales. The insane part of price wars is that it is not limited to only two rivals in the market. In fact, you can have a situation where a number of uh, competitors are at war in the marketplace, thereby creating what is called the Red Ocean Zone. The Red Ocean Strategy is a situation where firms engage in fierce competition that is based only on price, usually because they are solving the same needs in the same market in the same way. So as I like to explain, the Red Ocean Zone is red because stronger fishes are eating up weaker ones, thereby shedding blood into that uh, part of the ocean, making it bloody red. So how should smart businesses handle price wars then? My advice is this, engage a blue ocean strategy. And what is that? A blue ocean strategy. Now, picture that oceans are normally blue, right? So this strategy simply entails moving away from the bloody red competition streaking uh, red ocean zone into fresh blue zones of the oceans. <laughs> but how can you do this? Of course, there is no one-size-fits-all method. Rather, the strategy will be dependent on the nature of the business plus uh, the nature of the competition. Uh, for the people in the inner cycle, what we usually do is to go through the issues with them to develop strategies that will work for them. If you want to join the inner circle, the link will be in the description of this video. Now, what I will do for you in this video is to give you some general examples on how to move into the blue ocean strategy. But before then, let me show you the factors that cause fierce competition in the market. Because if you know them, you will be able to find ways to adjust at least one of them to your advantage. Number one is supply power. The question is, can you find cheaper sources of your raw materials? In other words, can you lower the powers of your suppliers? Also, can internal re-engineering of your business push your cost down? If, if your answer is yes, then the next factor I'm going to show you will become attractive. And that is buyer power. It comes with a question, what do buyers really want? 
Obviously, in the case of price wars, as we we're talking about, the powers have been given uh, to the buyers, and it, it may be very difficult to retrieve these powers from them. But then, what if you can offer the buyers something else or something additional? This would entail retaining your prize where it is and refusing to join the prize wars. But instead of that, you offer an additional complementary product or service to woo the buyers. For example, free services like offering uh, free installations when uh, the product is purchased from your uh, firm is one way. Or buy one and get another smaller product for free. You know, when you do this, your competitor is forced to stop crashing price because you have maintained your price at one place, you're not going down with them and yet you're making sales. Number three is threat of substitution. The product or service is under question. How easy it is for it to be replaced? If it is easy and it offers you an opportunity to get into the substitute market. But before you do that, I need you to check the profitability of going into the zone. If it is green, then you can move in there and enjoy the blue ocean while it lasts. For instance, if the competition in the sofa market has become very stiff and price war has broken out, one may decide to develop raffia furnitures that can adequately substitute the sofas. And ta-da, you have created a blue ocean zone for yourself. Well, at least for now, before other people find out. Number four is threat of new entry. And the question is, how easy it is for competitors to come into the market under review? If it's not easy, then my advice is that you consider forming uh, a union or an alliance, an association with your competitors to stabilize price and retrieve your powers from the buyers. You see, we do this a lot of times in the oil and gas to help us control price and it always works. But you see, price wars are very unuseful to companies because it hurts even the bigger players in the sector. So care must be taken to avoid price wars as much as possible. I'm so glad that you're here with me today. Thank you so much for watching and please join me in the next video. Money,